Hi everyone, Tim here at Pacific Coast Trainings with another video. Uh, this time I thought I'd do something a little bit different. Uh, I'd gotten a couple of uh, new pieces of equipment through a couple of orders that I'd made and thought I would take a few moments and just share some of my thoughts on uh, a couple of these really advanced uh, cars, a couple of high-end pieces of rolling stock that uh, I was excited to get. I don't get a lot of these, but I uh, thought I'd get one of uh, each and just see what they were like. I uh, was really pleased with both. So let's take, a, let's take a look. First up is an auto rack from Inner Mountain. This particular car is a Union Pacific bi-level auto rack, number 981785, uh, labeled for Union Pacific, a TTGX car. Um, Let's take a look inside the package. Inside the box, you can see the standard two-piece clamshell that uh, Intermountain and a lot of manufacturers use to support the models. Uh, interestingly, you can already see uh, through the car some of the translucent nature of the side panels, which is one of the things that uh, makes this car unique in HO scale, the fact that the metal side panels are actually perforated. Opening up the clamshell, I don't want to get too much force here, tearing this thing open. Uh, there we go. You get the model wrapped in a clear plastic film. And slide the clamshell out of the way and take the plastic off. I'm a little reluctant to hold it by the side panels, not knowing how sturdy they actually are. But there we go. You can actually see on the video itself the fact that the light shines through both sides of the panel, uh, indicating just how translucent those are. have to say, this is really, really well done. Um, I'm looking forward to weathering this thing up. Uh, and putting some graffiti on it, as you often find in the prototype cars. Also noticed uh, right away some of the other freestanding details that have been applied. Nice brake chain down here. I'll drag the model a little bit closer so we can take a look at that. That's a nice effect. The ladders and the rungs are separate. Nice brake appliance. On the ends, you've got the cut lever and a prototypical track. Looks like this one, the door has come off a little bit. It actually slides in and out. I'm gonna have to check that. Well, that was a bit worrisome, but uh, I seem to have figured out what was going on. So the doors in these cars are actually meant to open up. As you can see, they actually are here. Um, the problem was this left side door had popped off its lower door track. I don't know if you can see this lip here. Let me try and angle it so the light catches it just a little bit better. There's a raised piece of plastic here that is meant to catch the inside of the door and it's meant to kind of run through that and keep it on its track. There's a track up also above that the um, door has a molded on arm that slot that, that fits into the slot, helps to keep it in, intact. Together, uh, once it's up, they, uh, they actually work, it seems, reasonably well, although I'm certain I'm not going to open and close these doors very often. The other end of the car, you can see, has some of the same problems. I think this lower one is probably off of its track as well. So I'm going to spend a couple of minutes trying to fix those and see if I can get them back into their normal uh, operating position. So with this side, you can actually see what the problem is. This little tab here is part of the door, and it's popped out from the slot, which is this part underneath. So I'm going to need to pull this door back all the way out and reinsert it such that this arm fits into this slot. Here's what the piece looks like separated from the car. You can see the arm. And that fits into that slot right up there. And then there's a lower door track as well. And the bottom of the door also has a slot that is meant to go over that door track. So I'm going to try and reinstall this. Okay, I think I got both doors on. 
as you can see, you can see through the entire model now that both doors on either end are open. I uh, have to say it's kind of a nice feature, something you might expect from kind of a high-end model like this. These are um, not the cheapest models that are out there. On the other hand, these doors are pretty finicky, and I think if you were uh, in an operating setting uh, with you know lots of cars and really wanted to run, I don't know that the mechanical doors are worth it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put both of them back to the closed positions they normally would be running, uh, and hopefully they'll stay in place. Okay, well, I've got both the sets of doors on first one end, then on the other end, lined up to where they should be. Uh, once they were back on their door tracks, it wasn't terrible to open these up and close them again. Uh, I'd recommend if you're closing them, to use the fact that the edges of the doors do pop out from this side of the car to begin by closing by pushing it back closed from the side uh, and then pulling it in from here as well bearing in mind that you don't want to pull out you want to pull more towards the middle to follow the curve of the two tracks certainly a uh, tricky and somewhat clever engineering design by intermountain um, but man, I can, uh, you know, I'm grateful that my, my hands are relatively small and my fingers are pretty dexterous because these are, uh, that was definitely tricky to do. Um, and though I, I did, as part of that, get a chance to look over the car quite a bit, I have to say it's really a, a lovely job that they did with all of the detail along the bottom. The imprints uh, and printing is all quite excellent. The transparent side screens, again, you can see it really well here. Uh, just looking through, that's a really cool feature. They really are lovely cars. Um, I don't know how well they'd stand up to uh, a lot of use. I'm not going to put mine to a ton of use, but I'm glad I've got the model. Uh, I was able to pick this up from a uh, hobby shop at a relatively good price. And for what it is, and given where some of the other cars are coming in at, um, I think it's actually uh, pretty good. I do sort of wish a uh, pretty good price. I think I paid $70 for it. Um, I do wish that uh, the market had a car that had the advantage of the see-through panels, uh, but did not include the uh, just the, the engineering and the complexity of the actual opening doors. I don't know how much... Uh, Prototype modelers are really going to be using that, um, you know, certainly for displays to have this at the end of an auto transfer facility with a ramp and actual cars in there uh, would be a very cool scene. And I know some people have done that. Um, and I think that the way that Intermountain constructed this, uh, I give them credit for coming up with a design that is workable. Um, they're just really fragile. Um, so. I may pick up another one of these cars because I do really appreciate the perforated uh, nature of the metal side panels. Those are pretty great. Uh, all the detail markings uh, are, so forth are excellent. Um, overall, it's a fun car. I'm going to try it out in the layout uh, in a little bit and see how, see how it rolls. But so far, pretty, pretty excited and impressed with uh, what I've seen from Intermountain with this car. Look forward to comments and questions uh, down below, but uh, otherwise, happy rail running to everyone, and happy, happy Labor Day weekend. Take care.